sir has a session elsewhere, so he has to rush. Now we have Dr. Abhijit. Uh, he'll be talking about diabetic retinopathy and biomarkers for predicting outcome mainly. try to be as short as possible. So no financial interest involved. And this is the international nomenclature for OCT meeting consensus, normal OCT terminology, and the different layers upon which we will discuss the biomarkers. So diabetic macular edema for treatment purpose, this is a practical thing like traxonal det detachment, traxonal diabetic macular edema, and non-traxonal DME. So for traxonal DME, we can have VMT, vitreo macular traction, short posterior hyaloid, epiretinal membrane, and macular traxonal detachment, which needs surgery. And for non-traxonal DME, there are spongiform edema, cystoid macular edema, neurosensory detachment, for which medical therapy is the choice. So first and most important and most commonly used is the central subfield thickness. And this is the measured central one millimeter of ETDRS circle and indicates increased microvascular leakage and increased CST response better anatomically. Then there is subcovial neuroretinal detachment. So persistent microvascular leakage causes external limiting membrane breach, which is poor prognostically and responds better to dexamethasone implants. And then we see the uh, next common is cystoid macular edema. This spongiform edema is the earliest pattern of the edema. And fluid accumulates in ONN and OPL smaller cyst coalesce to form a bigger cyst. So here we can see the spectral lumen OCT and retinal thickness map in type 2 diabetes, moderate NPDL. The first one is the before treatment, the next one, the lower one is after treatment with a significant decrease in the thickness and also the, you can see the cyst disappeared and also some of the hyperreflective foci also disappeared. And then we come to the drill, that is the disorganization of retinal inner layer. It's a horizontal extent in microns for which any boundaries between the ganglion cell, inner plexiform layer complex, inner nuclear layer, and outer plexiform layer could not be identified within the one millimeter wide zone centered on the fovea. So in initial studies, they took the three scans above and three scans below the foveal, the total seven scans. So here we can see the photographs of one millimeter area they measured. And uh, this is the 570 uh, micron of the drill extent, and this is equivalent to the layers they are showing. You can see the OPLI ONL layers. Here you can see, but here where it is measured as five centi micron, the two arrows, these are the layers of blood, and we just put the normal OCT of the uh, macula, and you can compare with that one, basically. And uh, you can have the idea that which layer we are recommending. And change of foveal drill is a strong predictive biomarker for future vis uh, visual activity outcomes independent of the central sub uh, subfield thickness. And for every drill increase of 300 micron at four months, visual activity decreases by one line ETDRS at eight months, irrespective of treatment and CST. Here another photograph you can see, which is showing, it looks like initially it's a drill, but it's a large cyst you can see, which puts the layer together, but you can see differentiate there them the different way. So this is uh, not a drill, drill is absent here and the prognosis is definitely better compared to the last one. So decreased drill is good indicator for visual acuity improvement and for central involvement diabetic macular edema, strong correlations exist between baseline drill and subsequent visual acuity after macular edema resolution. And pattern of drill resolution appears to be predictive of subsequent visual acuity and likelihood of improvement. Then we find the hyperreflective foci or HRF. They are small dots like opacities, less than 30 micron without backscattering, and the reflectivity like NAP fiber layer. And uh, there are some theories how they can uh, be produced there inside, like subretinal lipoproteins or activated microglial cells. And even increased CD4 in aqueous humor also are associated with them. They are biomarkers for inflammation, and they are definitely better response to DEX implants. So this is one of the photographs you can see. This is the my multiple HRFs are there. And then here you can see the drill and uh, this yellow arrowheads showing the HRFs. And these are the cysts. And these are the bridging processes. 
with the green arrow showing them. So other OCT biomarkers, there are plenty. I just put it in the slide. Uh, HRF, hyperlytic parodal foci are there. They are related with the poor prognosis. Bridging retinal processes, they usually denote better prognosis. And subcubial parodal thickness, greater thickness is better. Then pros are photoreceptor outer segments, less in DR and CME, uh, DME, integrity of ELM, and uh, ellipsoid zone, intact zone is better. Parodal vascular index of CVI. Then taut posterior hyaluronic membrane needs first line vitrectomy. Cone outer segment peak or first loss denotes poor prognosis. And of course, PAM. In PDR, it can be seen and also in non-diabetic retinopathy patients and even when it is the heel DME also, you can see the resolved PAM also. So then the OCT angiography biomarkers we can see. They are the new tools. So they can identify microorganisms, IRMA, CNP areas, NVEs. And there are two things like vessel density. Blood vessel area is to total measured area, which decreased in diabetic patients where even you cannot find any retinopathy also. And then the intercapillary spacing, early capillary dropouts and ischemia denotes. Then, of course, the FSZ, and then fractal dimension and 3D percussion di uh, density. Here, there is one of the photos. You can see the red is capillary dropouts areas, and the green is the irregular FSZ you can see, and the yellow as the increased intercapillary spacing you can see. So then the last is the autofluorescent biomarkers. Increased fundus autofluorescence denotes there are increased central subfield thickness and DME, the worst visual activity, and are also found in diabetics without retinopathy also. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Abhijit, for a wonderful uh, session. Uh, and uh, the drill, I just wanted to add uh, one or two points that uh, sometimes when you uh, try to assess in the setting of a diffuse edema, it may not be so prominent, the disorganization, but the change in drill extent it happens with anti therapy. After the treatment, you feel that the, the once the edema reduces, the drill extent becomes more clear. So then uh, not only is it uh, prominent during the edema, but then it change in drill extent is a predictive biomarker for uh, you know predicting the visual acuity as an outcome with anti therapy. And also regarding the opta uh, markers that you said, the, the the FAZ enlargement you showed is more, first happens in the deep plexus and then happens in the superficial plexus. So if somebody has a normal looking superficial plexus and his FAZ enlargement happens in the deep plexus, then still that patient can have an improvement in uh, visual acuity with anti therapy. It's an early ischemia. Uh, so FAZ enlargement first happens in the deep plexus and later comes into the superficial plexus. So that is, that that has to be kept in mind. Yeah, thank you very much, George, for the nice and uh, uh, this thing very informative.